mob lynches Sri Lankan man for alleged blasphemy in Pakistan. In Silakot, Pakistan. On December 3rd, Priyantha Kumara, a Sri Lankan citizen working in Pakistan, was killed by a violent mob, sparking international outrage. Priyantha was a manager at a manufacturing company in the Silakot district of Punjab since 2012. Police said Kumara was accused of, quote, desecrating posters bear bearing the name of Islam's prophet Muhammad. Kumara was preparing the facility for a visit by a foreign delegation and asked workers to remove unnecessary stickers from factory machines. A couple of factory workers allegedly saw Kumara ripping down a poster provided by the Islamist party Tariki Lebek Pakistan, or TLP for short, and then throwing it in the dustbin. A rumor that Kumara had committed blasphemy was spread, prompting mobs to gather outside the factory. According to the publication The Dawn, a mob, the mob dragged Kumara outside where he was beaten by hundreds and then his corpse was set on fire. Prime Minister Imran Khan announced that he would personally oversee the investigations and vowed that, quote, all those responsible would be punished with the full severity of the law. Kumara's remains have been repatriated to Sri Lanka. Multiple arrests have also been made, while additional arrests may be underway as Pakistan's government continues to investigate. So um, this is something that happened one day before we did the news last week. So a lot of people then were asking us to cover it when we were doing the news, but um, we have to do research and it takes some time for details to come out and for us to prepare the news to do it formally. So we're covering it this week. And um, this, oh my God, Dia saying, I work with a guy who defended this. Okay, like the visceral, D, you didn't have to trigger me that hard right now. <laughs> oh my God. So um, I'm going to be honest, guys. I've cried over this incident multiple times this week. It's something that um, there aren't words for how horrific this is. Um, you can go see for yourself what the last moments of this man's life was like, since there were hundreds of people filming the incident and this is posted online and it, it, you know, I, I, it's, hard for me to comprehend even though as someone who studies stuff like this i actually do have more insight into this than most people but it's hard for me to comprehend how other humans can do this to each other um it's i um if you want to see my full thoughts on this I had a 20 minute rant that I posted on my Instagram. And then I also posted on the atheist Republic channel. You can go find it. It's called, um, like blasphemy lynching in Pakistan. No blasphemy lynching, a wake up call for Pakistan, where I was so disturbed about this incident two days afterwards that I just had to like, get it out of my system. And I just basically gave a speech off the top of my head for 20 minutes about this incident. Um, and it's something that has shocked a lot of people in Pakistan, but also I don't understand the shock to a certain extent because these incidents of lynching people over blasphemy is not new. Persecuting people over blasphemy has been accelerating increasingly fast over the past two years. I think people are shocked by um, maybe the brutality and public nature of this. And I think that in a, in a weird way, I felt a sense of outrage at the shock I was seeing expressed on Pakistani media because I was like, where's the outrage when this happens to your own citizens? For some reason, this only seemed to be getting such a big reaction because this was a foreign national. 
And I'm glad that this man, this father, this member of a community is getting that shock and outrage as he deserves, right? I, I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to take away from that in any way, shape or form. But it was such a stark contrast to how this is received when this happens to other Pakistanis, I couldn't help but notice. And when this happens to Christians, when this happens to Sikhs, when this happens to Hindu children, when this happens to Ahmadis or Shias, I actually don't really hear about it much on Pakistani social media because I follow different sources. I mean, what's English speaking, right? And this actually got captured the attention. Um, so recently um, on Secular Jihadists for Muslim Enlightenment, me, Armin, and Ali Rizvi did an episode about this. I highly suggest you guys go check it out on the Secular Jihadist channel. Um, where we talk about this in depth um, and really focus on the human cost of this and what is it going to take for Pakistan to wake up, um, to realize that the country is being held hostage by a depth of militant religiosity that few people can grasp, right? I think the country itself is in many ways in denial about it. Um, yeah, this, oh my God, it, it disturbs me to a very deep level. But Armin, what do you think? Yeah, yeah that's a very important point. Like, because um, the fact that, the fact that Imran Khan is pretending like, oh my God, what is, like how, what an outrage. Like, dude, this happens all the time in your country and you you're supposed to be taking care of your citizens and you don't and you act like you're you're so, you're so full of crap that you're pretending like this is like a unique situation um and also it shows that you don't care about this sri lankan man that has been you don't care about it you care about the international relationships that's why this is getting more of an outrage i mean it should get an outrage the, you know but but what about the Pakistanis? Like, what do Pakistan do? Don't Pakistan aren't Pakistanis offended that when this happens to their citizens, to their citizens, their their politicians that are supposed to be there to protect them from harm? Okay, so here's the thing, Imran Khan. If this is look at his tweet, okay, look at this tweet. This if this was horrific vigilante attack, okay, then then the ones that were being done on Pakistanis then there would also be a horrific vigilante attack that would be like this is a, this is a day for uh, of shame for pakistan well what's the difference is there any other difference other than the fact that this guy was not pakistani so then 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 every day is a day of shame for pakistan like it's saying this is a day of shame for pakistan there is not a single day on the calendar that is not a day of shame for pakistan imran khan and not uh, for you like guys every single pakistani should be outraged because this man doesn't care about his own citizens the job that he has is to protect his citizens but only a foreigner would get this attention as he should and it means that this man is not caring enough to actually care about this Sri Lankan man because you, how how much more obvious do you have to make that this is not about this victim, that this is about maintaining an international image, I'm worrying about what this is going to do to, be, be, about the relationship between Pakistan and Sri Lanka. That's what they care about. If they actually cared about human lives, it wouldn't matter where this person was from. And again, one thing else I mentioned on the Secular Jihadist channel when we covered this, go watch it because we spent an hour talking about this. Um, so go check it out. And Susanna was there as well. She, she was great. De definitely go watch that. That's, that was really, I think, Im important coverage of this whole incident that we had there. But yeah, um, and more, the last point I want to make and then we can move on is that 
they created this knowing what they were creating. Emran Khan is responsible for, for this being a problem in Pakistan. Okay, The military and the civilian government in Pakistan use these radical groups that seem to just be willing to fill the streets with blood with the most with any the mere suggestion that somebody might have said anything against the prophet or have done anything against the prophet not even insult the prophet suggested that maybe maybe he's not the last prophet okay it's is is it's escalating to the point where you don't even have to say anything if you're ahmadi or a shia like you're de facto are suggesting insults to the prophet okay because you're suggest yeah you know. but they have created entire political campaigns and advertising feeding this because they have nothing else to offer the pakistani people these politicians and the army has nothing to offer the pakistani people other than it's, it's such an easy way to get votes and support by saying like hey we will defend the prophet hey we will attack the people who are blaspheming against the prophet oh the prophet this the prophet that we care about it so much right like they keep bending the knee to the mob and suggesting that they're going to be the champions of the prophet they're going to be defending his honor okay right because you don't have actual things actual services to your people so this is how you get support and guess what well the mob keeps seeing that it's working the mob is like oh my god we are like we're basically the, the entire civilian government is like a puppet and we be we be the puppet masters. So we're gonna keep escalating, and we're gonna be demanding for more, the more and more and more. And the government keeps giving in because that's how they get support. And the army is using the mob against the civilian government, and civilian government like yes, whatever you say, here's this, here's that. Like they are, you know. And, and at some point, what's gonna happen? Are they gonna just completely take over? Like I know that might be an exaggeration, but. Even if there's less than a half a percent chance, it's dangerous. We're talking about a country with nuclear weapons, okay? A country with the, the, these are the same radical people that have openly suggested that the nukes needs to be used against a country like France, okay? This is escalating to a point like it's, it's like it's it's just like it's you have lost the control over these this mob like. At some point, you, everything is going to fall apart. I mean, it has already, to be honest, right? But it could, es it could keep escalating. But this is what you, Emran Khan, this is what you made. You did this. You did this knowing what exactly, you knew the exact nature of these people. And you kept on feeding into it. You le le leaned into it. You tried to appease them. You tried to get votes for them. That You did that. So when you say this is a day of shame for Pakistan, this is a day of this is a day of shame for Imran Khan. You are responsible. You have blood on your hand, Imran Khan. Anyways, sorry. I, need I to... think I have a small contention that this, you know, started a lot longer before Imran Khan came to power, but he can definitely be held responsible for the many ways in which he legitimizes the deep Islamization of Pakistan and deepens it in so many different ways, not the least of which is in the education system. Um, oh yeah, which, I completely agree. I, I'm, okay, this started not, you know, this started when the, the very first day Islam showed up in that area, okay? So um, like this has been like more than uh, hundreds of years since this thing started right so i'm not saying that Imran khan started this but mm -hmm. he definitely fed into it for his um for his personal political gain knowing what this is knowing exactly what this is so can yeah. i read so, a no, really I'm... quick post that i thought put it well yeah so um this is a post by sean tassir and sean tassir is the son of salman tassir who was a governor who was assassinated in Pakistan for showing um, solidarity with a Christian woman who was accused of blasphemy. So merely um, showing mercy 
to an alleged blasphemer or being seen as a defender of an alleged blasphemer in any way can cost you your life in Pakistan. As a, a civil servant, as a governor, he was assassinated by his own bodyguard. So that's the background. So um, Sean Tassier posted, Dear Prime Minister, so here's a little background. Out of the hundreds of people who tortured Priyantha and beat him to death, there was one man, his name was uh, Malik Ad Adnan, who protected him. And this man has been given, Malik Adnan has been given a high medal of honor. So he said, Prime Minister, it is easy to decorate Malik Adnan for his bravery. But if you're serious about addressing the misuse of the blasphemy law, take immediate steps to provide justice to Junaid Hafiz, who is languishing in jail awaiting trial. Um, Junaid Hafiz is a Fulbright scholar who was accused of blasphemy, and he's, I believe, on death row because of it. Wouldn't it be a greater honor and to the memory of Priyantha Diawandana, that's the other name of Priyantha Kamara, then handing out laurels, be a Malik Adnan yourself and end in injustice rather than a backseat observer who claps at the bravery of others. I thought that was fantastically put. It's easy to just hand an award to the one man out of hundreds willing to risk his life for someone else to prevent a lynching. But what is he doing? What is the, Imran Khan doing to help the people who are being persecuted by his own government for blasphemy? Nothing. What is he doing to prevent this in the future? Nothing. It's just a horse and pony show. There's there's nothing behind it. Um. So, like I said earlier, if you want to, um, honestly, like this case has re like really emotionally burnt me out. So, if you kind of want to know like my full thoughts on this in a more articulated way, I highly suggest you go look up this video called "Blasting Lynching: A Wake Up Call for Pakistan" that I put in the live chat, or go check out the Secular Jihadist episode called uh, "Lynch to Death for Blasphemy," where um, we really dig into this. Yeah, Gato saying Susanna cried over the matter getting burned. Yeah, no, I did cry in the middle of that episode. Um I think I think more people should cry over this. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Avabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.